Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're going to do another episode of Fifty Shades of Phuket. Now, in this episode, Phuket is going to discuss how the world economic system and globalization resulted in the heliocentric model. So, let's let him get started. Now, it's interesting to note that uh, Nicholas Copernicus um, in 1517 uh, derived a quantity theory of money, a key conce concept in economics, and in 1519 he formulated an economic principle that later came to be called uh, Grecian's Law. Now, it, we have with the globe Earth model, or what we now call globalization, global warming, whatever. This, this really is a corporate model. Newton was the same. Newton was a banker, a mathematician, and not only is he said to be responsible for uh, discovering a way to describe gravity, but he was also the head of uh, the Royal Mint. He helped England uh, create the gold standard. So what we have with the globe and global economics or globalization is this model for commerce. And that goes for the time zones, and uh, everything else that goes with the globe. The globe is a, a construct, a commercial construct. All right, the, the globe is a commercial construct. Okay, so you're tying together the heliocentric model of the sun being at the center of the uh, solar system to the spherical Earth being a globe, and then somehow linking that to the global economy and then linking it further to global warming. Okay, let me just clear a couple things up here. First of all, the heliocentric model is a model of the universe. It doesn't say anything about the shape of the Earth. The spherical Earth is based on Earth science and measurements and global warming is a subcategory of that called climatology. Now, the global economy is an economic theory that doesn't have anything whatsoever to do with the shape of the Earth. It has to do with the fact that our economy in the United States is tied into the economy of the UK, is tied into the economy of China and, and the Russian Federation, and all the other little countries of the world, all right? We're all interdependent as one big village economically. So we're going to cue up the music and see where he takes this. And again, it works. It's a working model in of itself, but it does not describe our physical reality. It does not dictate our physical reality. It is simply an artificial mathematical construct, a model that we can call universal because it allows us to communicate an idea that we can then use or refer to. For example, time. Of course, we need to refer to times. It has its uses, but it, it doesn't represent our physical reality or uh, any, any, any idea or scientific proof about creation. Big bang, spinning balls in space, etc. You know, Nick, I get it. You don't like models. But the fact that you don't like models does not change the fact that models can be an accurate representation of reality. We don't make a model and then say that that is reality based on it. We take reality and then we try and model it to understand it better. So, for example, time is a very real thing. Time passes. It's a steady 
march through time, so to say. Now, the fact that we divide time up into milliseconds and hours and years and centuries, this is an artificial construct as far as the increment of time. And it's a, a model that we use so that we can tell the difference from one time to another time. You know, I know the difference um, between now and when the American Civil War was. It was in the 1860s. That gives me an idea of how long ago it was. I can estimate how many generations it was. I can think about the technology that was available at that time and compare it to what came out of the Civil War. For example, I, I can look at photography and then I can see photographs from the Civil War. These are just ways of looking at, looking at natural objects in a way that we can understand them. That's all a model is. So a point. To, to, to consider that these astronomers and scientists and theorists that have helped to create this heliocentric globe model have always been involved in commercial ventures as well. And so this is what we have with the heliocentric model or the globe, globalization. That's what we find ourselves in today. You know, Nick, let me just make sure that I understand you correctly. Now, the fact that people that understand the world have jobs apparently makes them bad people? Okay. And, of course, we are led to believe that uh, the idea of a flat Earth is, will take us back to the Stone Age. Part of the programming that we get in school that uh, we are taught to ridicule the idea of a flat earth, that, that we are told that people used to think that uh, you would sail off the edge if you got to the horizon. And of course, we know that's a ridiculous idea. But it's also a ridiculous idea to think that the horizon is a curve that has never been measured. So it's really they, these ideas are as ridiculous as each other and have no basis in real physics, real science. You know, Nick, let me get this straight, okay? You are complaining that people are quote unquote taught to ridicule people that believe in the flat earth, okay? That the flat earth would bring us back to the stone age. Okay, what did we do in the stone age? Did we measure things with lasers? Did we travel in space? Did we take photographs? Did we understand gravity? Could we calculate the trajectory of an artillery shell based on our understanding of gravity? Could we construct airships and submarines that are based on the concept of buoyancy, which requires gravity? Could we develop gyro compasses that navigate ships that require rotation of an earth and gravity to function. Okay, did we have those things then? No, we didn't. Do you accept those things? If the answer is no, then yes, you're trying to return us to the Stone Age. We have been to space. We take photographs. Here's a number of them. Either you accept this or you would acknowledge that you want to reject this. And if you reject this, if you reject measurements and instrumentation, then quite frankly, yes, you're bringing us back to the time that the only thing that we can understand are things that we can smell, touch, or taste. And that is not how we went to the moon. That's not how we developed aircraft or antibiotics. Now that's it for this part of the video. We're getting into the meat of things right now, and that is the determination of the circumference of the earth by the method of Eratosthenes. Now, we're gonna to listen to Nick talk about this in the next video. We're gonna talk about me doing it with Blue Marble Science down in Tennessee, where we confirmed the circumference of the earth and the fact that it's not a flat plane. So, until then, hey, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button down there, and then 
hit the bell because then you'll get notification when the next video comes out. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. We'll see you again soon.